In this video, we'll work an example of um, finding an area that we had started in the virtual lecture, but we kind of ran out of time and also the video froze um, after I'd gotten partway through it and I didn't notice that until afterward, um, or until the very end, I mean, I should say. So um, at the end of that video, video, virtual lecture, we were working an example where you have three circles of radii two, three, and four, and they're externally tangent to each other, meaning that they touch, but one circle doesn't, um, is not inside of another circle. So when you do that and you connect the um, centers of the circles, you get this triangle and we can work out the side lengths of the triangle using the radii of the two circles, well, the three circles. Like if this is radius two and this one's radius four, well, that means that two for that radius and four for that radius together makes a radius, well, not radius, but a side length of six one from one center to the other is six units. So we did that for all three sides and we were able to use Heron's formula to find the area. So then the follow-up question was, what if we really just wanted this gray area in the middle, the space between the circles, not the whole triangle, right? Well, how could we do that? Well, if we were to able to find this angle here, right, then we could find the area of this sector and subtract. Likewise, if we find this angle, we can find this area and subtract, find this angle, find this area and subtract. So um, basically I need to find angles alpha, beta, and gamma. Okay, and that will allow me to find those areas using the area of a sector formula, and then we can subtract those areas from the um, this area that we found to get. Here's the area of that 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 space between the circles. So um, let's start by finding angle alpha. So I'm going to start by saying, okay, a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine alpha. So we're using law of cosines. And I know all the side lengths, right? Um, a is 5. Uh, b is 6. And c is 7. Okay, so 5 squared equals 6 squared plus 7 squared. minus two times six times seven times cosine alpha. So uh, that's gonna be 25 equals um, 36 plus 49, I think it's 85. 85, I'll check out the calculator in a second, minus 84 cosine alpha. It's, I'm pretty sure that's right, but it doesn't hurt to be more sure. So 36 plus 49, yeah, 85, cool. Okay, so now I'm gonna subtract 85 on both sides. So I'll get negative 60, okay. Negative 60 um, equals negative 84 times cosine alpha. Uh, then I can divide by negative 84 on both sides. So I'll have uh, 60 over 84, the, you know, the minus signs cancel. Um, equals cosine alpha, and then I can reduce, this is five over seven, equals cosine alpha. So alpha equals uh, cosine inverse of five over seven. And if I want, I can throw that into, um, throw it into a calculator. Now, since, you know, we had been using degrees all the time for this chapter, since we're gonna use the um, area of a sector formula, I need to switch to radians. So in my calculator, which you know what, I can just do this. I um, have this calculator here, this um, calculator emulator. Uh, I'll put a link in the description for this calculator. There's a free 90 day version, which is what I'm using. I don't know what it costs to pay for it, but you you know, you might want to use this, I suppose. So I'm going to do, um, make sure I'm in radians mode. So over, enter, now I'm in radians. Okay, and then I want a uh, cosine inverse, a second cosine button of five over seven, close parentheses, enter, and I get 0 0.7752. I'm choosing four decimal places kind of arbitrarily. Uh, so we'll put that um, calculator away for now. Uh, now I can go find beta, so B squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2ac times cosine beta. b was 6, yeah, so 6 squared, oops, 
six squared. Um, a was five, so five squared plus seven squared minus two times five times seven times cosine beta. So this is 36 equals uh, 25 and 49 make um, 74. 74, I'm pretty sure that's right. I guess we can check out the calculator in a minute. Uh, minus 70 times cosine beta. I'll subtract 74 on both sides and I'll get uh, 38, negative 38 rather, equals negative 70 times cosine beta and I'll divide by negative 70. So 38 over 70, the minus signs cancel. It's cosine beta and then I'll reduce at 19 over 35 equals cosine beta, so beta equals cosine inverse of 19 over 35, which is approximately uh, cosine inverse 19 over, you know, I wonder, yeah, I can just use the keyboard. I don't have to click anyway, but that's fine. Uh, enter, so I get uh, 0 0.9, well, I guess that's a 9970. Okay, so I found alpha, I found beta. Now to find gamma, um, I don't have to use the law of cosines again. Let's, in fact, get rid of that. Um, you know, alpha plus beta plus gamma equals uh, pi, right, pi radian. So I'll just subtract alpha and beta on both sides, so. Gamma equals pi minus alpha minus beta. Oops. So that's approximately pi minus 0 0.7752. If I planned ahead of time, you know, I really, I could use the calculator to, I'll, I'll show you what I mean, but I can have the calculator handle all these decimal places, but I'll go ahead and write it out like this. Uh, minus 0 0.9970. And that's approximately, so let's bring the calculator back up. Um, I'm going to retype all of this because I want to let the calculator keep as many decimal places as possible. Uh, was that 5 over 7? 5 over 7. So 5 over 7. And you know what? In fact, I need to do this. Uh, pi minus cosine inverse of 5 over 7 minus cosine inverse of 19 over 35. Okay, and that should give me 1.5102. Uh, okay, so let's say now we found alpha, beta, and gamma. So I need to find, say, the area of the largest circle. I'll use alpha because that's the corresponding um, angle for that circle, right? So radius 4 and um, I don't know why, but the the auto circle is a little buggy sometimes. Anyway, uh, I can get rid of this calculator for now. Sorry about that. So this angle corresponds to that circle, right? So uh, angle of whatever alpha was and then radius of four. So the area of sector alpha, right? Well, it's gonna be one half r squared Theta, right? Well, in that case, one half r was four times what's theta in in radians, right? 0. 0.7752. And if I want, you know, let's let's even do this. I can have the calculator keep track of the decimals for me. I don't need to write them every time. Okay, so I can put that back in my calculator. Maybe I should just leave it up, I suppose. So um so 0.5 times 4 squared is 16 times cosine of 5 over 7. Okay, so I get 6.20. Uh, I guess I'll do four places again. So this is approximately 6.2015. Uh, okay, so then sector beta is also 1 half r squared theta. And usually it's kind of bad form 
to use one letter for two different, for two different things, but I, this is just the formula. I'm not going to worry about that too much. So um, angle beta goes with um, radius 3. Okay, so 1 half is 3 squared times cosine inverse of, was it 19 over 35, I believe it was, okay. So that's approximately, I can throw this in the calculator, so 0.5 times 9 times cosine inverse of 19 over 35. Okay, so I get 4.48630. Three, and then sector gamma. This will be the radius two, I believe it was. So one half, well, one half r squared theta, which is in this case one half uh, two squared. And in this case, since um, I don't want to rewrite that entire expression, so I'll just I'll just use this. I'll cut corners a little bit. So one point five one zero two. Okay, so that is approximately, um, in the calculator though, I'm going to go back up here, I'm going to take this, so the calculator uh, keeps it, multiply that by 0.5 and that by 4, so I'm a bit out of order, but that's okay. And then I put that in, I get 3.0203. So then the area that I really want, the area of that squish space between the circles, well, this is going to be 6 root 6, the area of the triangle, minus the area of sector alpha, minus the area of sector beta, and minus the area of sector gamma, okay? So that's going to be approximately uh, 6 root 6 minus, and I'm not going to be able to... Um, I mean, I guess I could have the calculator handle all this, but it's just going to be super tedious. So I'll just do it by hand. So 6.2015 minus uh, 4.4863 minus 3.0203. Okay, so in the calculator, 6 times square root of 6 minus... Um, 6.2015 minus 4.4863 minus 3.0203. We get 0.9888. Up uh, zero, sorry, zero point nine eight eight eight. So just about one, just just shy of one square unit in that little wedge. Okay, so that's a you know, multi-step problem. There's a lot going on there, but I think it's a good application. It's sort of an application problem you know, because this could be the space between some gears. It could be how much you're calculating, how much fluid do you need for an engine to run efficiently. There's lots of things that could have this kind of thing. And the, the whole point is, um, let me get rid of calculator. The, the whole point I'm making is, so we have these basic tools, you can calculate areas, and you use them in creative ways to solve a problem.